Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is that you may be, wherever you are. Thank you very much for making us a part of your day. I am Brad Franklin, creative content writer here in Chesterfield, and I'm very glad to be able to tell you that Chesterfield Behind the Mic is back on the air once again. Um, we've got a great show planned for you today. Obviously, it's the holidays, and there's a lot going on, and people are busy. And you know what? Safety is an important piece of that. And I think for a lot of folks, whether you're in the kitchen cooking, maybe you're setting up trees, maybe you're setting up lights, you're doing all kinds of things around your house. Um, it's one thing to you know to get uh, to get busy and do stuff. Maybe you're out shopping and and you and you lose track of you know where your packages are in your car and stuff. What our our goal for for this show is basically to to try to help you be as safe as you can in all this and. We're going to start today with Fire Chief Lloyd Center, who's with us. Chief Center, how are you? Brad, thank you for having me. Glad to have you on the podcast. Sir. I'm very, um, very much looking forward to, to to talking through some of the things that are on the agenda today. For those of you who are watching the show, you're going to see a series of graphics as we go through our conversations with uh, Chief Center and Colonel Katz today. Um, for those of you listening, I'm going to do my best to to be uh, to summarize as best I can and kind of talk you through what those graphics are, are, are all about. I guess the first place I want to start with in general is I would imagine, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, that the holiday season is probably the most dangerous time for fire safety in a home. Is that would you is that a, would you agree with that or what's like where does that sort of fall the holiday season on the spectrum of, of things? Well, certainly this time of year uh, there are more risks for fires um, in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly people are cooking, they're gathering together, uh, they're decorating, uh, using lights. Mm -hmm. um, they may have a a natural tree in the right. home. So there's a lot uh, more ignition sources in mm -hmm. the home uh, this time of year for sure. And is this a, you know, in terms of calls, is this a busy time for you guys? Is this a, um, a, a more, you know, about education and sort of sharing that information, you know, in terms of prevention? How, how where does that fall on your spectrum? It can be a busy time. Um, you know, you've got the, the combination of cold weather, um, you know, heating systems that are uh, more active. You've got uh, all of the other things that are going along with the right, holidays. Right. Uh, and then you can have very slow periods of time as well when people are, are not at work or they're at home, mm -hmm. they're not traveling the roadways. And so there's, right. sometimes there's some trade-offs there. Now, our first graphic we're going to talk about is, is, is kitchen safety. So um, obviously, you know, this time of year, people are cooking a lot and um, they're also distracted a lot. And there's a lot of times kids home more often during the holidays. And it's very easy to, to walk away from a stove and it's very easy to maybe lose sight of what you should do beforehand to make sure that you're sort of prepared. So um, one of the things that you can do is obviously you want to keep that area clutter free. You want to focus on your food and not be distracted. You want to make sure you're using a timer. You're not just, you know, trying your best to, to remember what time something's supposed to come off the eye. You want to make sure you have a kid free zone. They, I guess the recommendation is at least three feet uh, beyond any hot items so the kids are, are, are safe. And also, too, when you're when you're cooking, you want to keep a lid nearby in case of a, a grease fire. Um, in terms of the the, the types of um, fires that that happen um, this time of year, is is kitchen safety the biggest issue? Is that where where does where does that sort of um, rank in 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 terms of the um, the calls that you guys see? Well, cooking related um, causes mm -hmm. are the leading causes of fires throughout the year, right? But obviously, during the holidays, more there's people more people home, cooking, right? They're right. cooking. Over the past year and a half, two years, more people have been cooking at home because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So uh, cooking related fires, um, you know, that, that's where a lot of the fires start. And so uh, your points are very well taken um, that uh, you have to exercise caution whenever right. you're cooking. Don't leave those pans unattended. Uh, make sure that you, you know, keep a, a safe zone around the the stove uh, mm -hmm. or other areas that you're cooking so that, um, you know, kids can't get in there, mm -hmm. keep those uh, pot handles turned away so the right. toddler can't reach up and grab it and get yeah. burned. Uh, all of those things are very, very valid regardless of the time of year. Yeah. Now, in a situation where, um, you know, let's say folks are at home cooking, uh, we, I mentioned, you know, having a lid nearby for a grease fire. Are there any other recommendations that you might make to folks who are, you know, looking to, to cook some this, this, this holiday season and, and who want to stay safe? Well, definitely the, the pan, uh, the lid for the pan is very important because that's one of the quickest ways to extinguish mm -hmm. a fire once it starts. Right. Uh, having a fire extinguisher in your home, making sure you have working smoke detectors at right. all times. If a fire does happen, you can't control it quickly. Um, call 911, get out, get everyone out and stay out. Right. That's the safest thing. Yeah. And that actually sort of leads perfectly into the next one where we, you know, holiday trees, you mentioned if you have a live tree. Now, I don't have the sinuses for a live tree, folks. I'm sorry. I just don't. But there are those who do, and there are those who love their live trees. And if there's anything that I've learned in my research, um, and those of you 
who are watching this um, are going to at some point in here probably see a video of how quickly it takes for a, a Christmas tree to go up in flames. Uh, it's that that thing needs water. And it's Absolutely. one of those things that I think a lot of folks, it's, abs- it's, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind for a lot of people. You know, the idea of um, that if you have a live tree, it needs to be watered. If you, uh, you know, if you have um, an artificial tree, you need to make sure it's fire resistant. If you have a live tree, you make sure it stays water so that, you know, it's not going to go up uh, the way that, that you're probably seeing in that video right now. You want to make sure you place your holiday trees away from any fireplaces, any radiators, or any doorways. Um, the doorways was one that I had not thought about, and I was like, actually, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, you want to make sure you use any lights that have been tested. You want to make sure that you have no more than three standard size strands per extension cord, which, I mean, look, that's a thing I've definitely broken in my day. Um, you make sure you turn off all your lights when you go to bed and when you leave the house. And also, you want to make sure you check your lights for any damage that you might have um, you know, before installation. I would imagine too, you know, kitchen fire is obviously a big focal point, but um, when we get into lighting houses, um, certainly for the EMS side, folks, I don't want to say falling off roofs, but I mean, we have all at some point in our lives tried to decorate for for Christmas, for, for, for whatever it might be, and probably taken a step too far on a ledge that we probably shouldn't have taken. In, in terms of these recommendations, what really stands out to you uh, about this list? My guess is um, that making sure your your live tree is is well watered and that it's away from any sort of um, flammable situations. But what really stands out to you uh, about that and about um, holiday well, tree safety? Again, to your point, you can enjoy a live tree as long as you you know keep it watered, keep it away from those ignition sources, and when it does dry out, you know it needs to come out of the house because it does add. Uh, significant fire load in the area mm-hmm. where yeah. the tree is kept. Yeah. Um, and your, your other points from a safety perspective are also very well taken. Be careful if you're climbing a ladder, you're out mm-hmm. working in the yard. Um, those who are older, if you fall and you get injured, you could um, you know suffer severe injury mm-hmm. or even death. And yeah. so um, you know, be very, very careful in those areas. Um, overloading your electrical circuits and overloading extension cords in particular mm-hmm. and junction boxes, um, those are those are real risks. Yeah, and so absolutely. follow the manufacturer's instructions on your lighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new LED lighting systems have a much lower uh, voltage draw, hmm. uh, but um, they they can be stringed together. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you can string more of those together than you can right. the old style lights. Right. Um, but uh, again, be very careful that you don't overload those systems because that's another uh, ready source of ignition this mm-hmm. time of year. And honestly, too, and that, this is a personal experience of mine. I had a tree one year. I, I bought a new tree. I plugged it in. It was great. I turned on another light and the fuse blew. I was like, that's weird. Right. thought it was a tree. Took the tree back, got in tree, did the same thing. If you encounter any issues, I would imagine this would be uh, a good recommendation too. If you encounter, encounter any issues with your wiring, don't just keep trying it. You know, Figure out the source of it because something in your walls, you don't want it to come back and get you later in the middle of the night. Um, and that sort of also leads kind of nicely into this uh, our our last graphic here about candle safety. Now, this is one that for some people I can understand who aren't folks who burn a lot of candles, um, that this might not be something that is as um, maybe they have as much experience with, right? You, you Maybe this is the one time of year where you have more candles out than maybe uh, some other times of the year. So make sure you blow out all candles when you leave a room or when you go to bed. You make sure you keep them at least a foot away from anything that can burn. Um, never leave a child alone in a room with a burning candle. I don't like to leave a child in a room alone with anything, but especially not a burning candle. Uh, you want to make sure you put candle holders on sturdy, uncluttered surfaces. Make sure you that you light the candles carefully, keeping your hair and loose clothing away, which I can imagine um, is, a, is a much bigger problem than most folks probably assume. There's a, probably a lot of burns that happen that way. And finally, never use a candle uh, if oxygen is used in the home. Um, in terms of candles, what what stands out to you uh, about those recommendations, and what do you see from a from a fire EMS uh, point of view in terms of candles? How much of a problem do you feel like that it really is? It's it's not a huge problem, but again, it's just one additional ignition source. Right. That if you're not uh, being careful around mm-hmm. it, it can cause you some real trouble. Right. Um, you can enjoy candles as long as you follow the safety instructions that you just. Um, you know, went through. Yeah. Uh, I would also encourage people to consider the new battery type of candles oh, yeah. that right. are out there. Right. They look very realistic. Um, they're very safe. And much less um, likely to burn much your house down. Much less likely to burn your house down. Absolutely. <laughs> but we do from time to time have fires that are caused by candles yeah. and, and, and they're in, in uh, odd places yeah. very often, unfortunately. Yeah. I also can understand too, that for folks who, you know, like I said before, who maybe they don't, they're not working with candles a lot. 
it's not necessarily just if, I mean, I guess anytime you bring fire into your home, you know, there's a chance, right? It, that you, you can, you can lessen that risk, you know, based on how, you know, prepared you are, sort of how you know, well-rounded you are in terms of the, what your expectations are, making sure that you're mindful of this and mindful of that. But realistically, any fire that's in your home, even if it's a small amount, it can become a larger amount very quickly. Um, and I would imagine too, that when you're, you know, whether it's clothing, hair, animals, you know, very easy for our dog or a cat to knock something into something and, you know, a candle to, to go awry. Um, I think we've all seen movies where, you know, some sort of, whether it's a, a candle or cigarette butt goes into a trash can. And next thing you know, the whole wall is, is inflamed. I can imagine that these are all small little increments that can turn to disaster very quickly. And I feel like Absolutely. for a lot of us, we think of ourselves, I don't want to say we think of ourselves as being invincible. We certainly don't think about the ramifications of something small because it is small. Um, what would be your advice to folks just in general this holiday season, whether it's trees, whether it's candles, whether it's the kitchen, just your general sort of uh, advice for folks as they're trying to manage that risk? Well, be aware of your surroundings. Always make sure that you're, you know, practicing, you know, good safety tips with, uh, with using any type of open flame. The other thing that people forget about is if you have a fire in a fireplace, those embers can mm. stay hot for a very long time, sometimes several days. Mm -hmm. And one problem that we do have here in the county is we have fires that start on a back deck okay, um, and, and burn up the side of the house and are in the attic before the homeowners even mm. know about that. Many of those are caused by people discarding smoking materials mm -hmm. on the back deck. They go out back and they smoke. They have a, a little flower pot maybe there that they're putting cigarettes out. That's a potential ignition source that can start in the middle right, of the night. Right. The other problem is people cleaning out their fireplace ashes, yeah. putting them in combustible containers and putting them on the back right, deck. Right. And then at two o'clock in the morning, the back deck is on fire. And yeah. It's up in the attic before they know it. And fire pits, you know, nowadays, right. you know, I want to say 10 years ago, this was not as much a thing. But now, you, you know, you buy a fire pit, you, do, you put it too close to your home, you put it too close to your deck, you put it, you know, too close to your shed. Um, very quickly, you know, an ember, you know, a little bit of wind in the right place. Um, so obviously that's a, a, a big focal point too, is to not just be mindful of what's going on inside the home, but also outside the home as right. well. Douse those embers with water. And then again, if you're cleaning out your fireplace, put it in a non-combustible container and take it away from the house. Good deal. And lastly, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Citizens Academy. Um, um, since we're having you on the podcast, I want to talk a little bit about just, because I know that this is something that there's a lot of interest in the community about fire EMS and um, certainly the um, the Citizens Academy does a, a great job of not just giving people the opportunity to see things, but also giving the opportunity to learn things. Um, so adults ages 18 years and older uh, are eligible. Each session provides participants with information about fire operation as well as how to become a citizen firefighter. Program offered twice a year, spring and fall. Space is only uh, capped at, uh, I believe, 30 participants. And you can see they include EMS, CPR training, a tour of the communication center and special ops uh, and more. Um, in terms of the uh, Citizens Academy, I, I know we don't have a, a date right now for when that'll be in, this, uh, in the spring, but um, in general, what's been the uh, response with that and, and how has that program kind of grown and, and evolved over the years? Well, it's been a great opportunity for our residents to learn more about uh, Chesterfield Fire and EMS and the services that we provide to community um, and uh, how they can better support us in the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, it's been a very popular program. I'd like to see uh, more people join in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, right now we don't have a, a, a firm start date because of COVID and the uncertainty right. of what right. the next few months hold. But right. as soon as we we get a, a firm date, we'll get that advertised. But we right. encourage anyone who's a resident of Chesterfield County to consider signing up for the Citizens Academy. It's a it's a great opportunity to learn about all the great things that, that our men and women do each and every day. Great. Well, Chief Center, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and talking to us a little about fire safe this holiday season. Um, I guess uh, have a Happy holidays yourself, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Brad, same to you. Thank you. We're now joined by Colonel Katz from the Chesterfield County Police Department, and we're going to talk a little bit about safety from a different standpoint. Colonel Katz, first, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you, and I appreciate you talking to me without an attorney present. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Both of my, my, my sister and my brother-in-law are both lawyers, and they would actually probably be very upset with me if, if that were the case. Uh, in any event, uh, we're going to talk about things that I definitely did not do. Um, <laughs> We're gonna first. We're gonna talk about some uh, shopping safety. Obviously, this time of year, people are very busy trying to you know get their shopping done. Obviously, 
you know, the, the advent of Amazon and, and such means that a lot of packages get delivered these days, which is something else we're going to talk about in a second. But in terms of general soft shopping safety, let's, let's, let's get into this. Um, I guess one of the things first is you want to stay alert when you're out, whether you're with by yourself, you probably should shop with a friend or a group if you can. You don't want to, avo- you don't want to carry around too many credit cards or too much uh, cash. You also want to make sure you choose a spot, uh, a spot in the parking lot that's uh, in a high traffic, sort of well-lit area, you don't want to leave anything valuable in your car, certainly nothing that can be seen through the windows, and make sure you walk to your car with your keys in your hand. In terms of the incidents that we see uh, in Chesterfield through the, the holiday season, how how much of that is focused on shopping? Are they in areas uh, around commerce? What's What's been the experience for the department over the years in that respect? Well, typically, you know, one of the things I like to say is that uh, people that will uh, steal your hard-earned uh, items are, are typically pretty lazy people. They don't want to work for <laughs> That's themselves, very good point. right? So yeah. uh, we always ask for people to make uh, the job of stealing uh, your materials and your valuables as difficult as possible mm-hmm. uh, so that those lazy folks go to someone else. Right. Um, and so that's all we ask people to do is, is to be um, intentional about, uh, you know, taking valuables and maybe putting them, putting them in the trunk of their car instead of laying them in the back seat and mm-hmm. going back into the mall and right. things like that. I think it's, it's really important that people just, you know, everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them, right. but it's important to realize that you're always going to be someone, someone else, right. right? And it's going to happen. Right. So, uh, it's best to, uh, to, to take those reasonable steps, uh, to make that difficult. And, uh, you know, it's not fun to, to, to mitigate uh, a crime, but it may be fun if you kind of think of it in the context of, I'm going to make it difficult for a lazy person to steal my <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. So how am I, how am I going to make it difficult? Right. And, you know, and if at the end of the shopping trip, you've uh, walked away and you haven't been uh, the victim of a crime, then, then you've won the game yeah. and, you know, and, and look at it from that kind of a context. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's interesting too, is that a lot of people, you know, maybe, you know, it's like with uh, Chief Center a minute ago, the idea that you, you know you've got folks who are cooking at Christmas and they don't think of themselves as being the ones who become part of some statistic, right? They don't right. think of themselves as being, you know, the story that other folks tell about making sure you don't walk away from the stove. You don't want to be the person who tell is part of the story about how you don't, you know, put 14 pairs of shoes in, you know, the the back seat as opposed to the trunk. That it would have taken you the two extra seconds you know, to open the trunk and put it there as a, as a pose. And I think your point about lazy people and sort of the, the idea that, that crime in, in a lot of ways is a, is a thing of opportunity, yep. right? Is that if you open that door, someone might walk through it and make sure you don't open that door. Um, I can imagine too, that as, as we talk about, you know, safety during the holidays, it's not just the packages that you go out and buy. It's like, then those packages are at home. And a lot of people then after Christmas go on vacation and vacation safety is obviously a huge deal. Um, so you want to make sure you keep your shades and your blinds in their normal positions when you're on vacation. You want to make sure that you stop your mail and newspaper deliveries, or you ask someone who you trust to come and pick all that stuff up daily. You want to make sure that you have timers on your um, household lights. So they turn on and off at appropriate times. So folks maybe on the outside, um, don't maybe know that you're gone. Uh, make sure that all your windows and doors are locked to make sure that you have your car is locked and your valuables are out of sight. Um, and you can also contact Chesterfield Police to request a vacation check on your home. That's 804-748-1258. I think in this context, maybe we all think of home alone. I I don't know. I do. Um, You know, the the burglars driving down the street, looking at the houses to figure out which ones, you know, are actually occupied and which ones aren't. Um, But realistically, it's it's more than likely going to be, again, a crime of opportunity. And making sure that yours isn't the house that looks like the easy mark is probably the right way to go. What's your experience with this and what do you think stands out about those tips? Well, I think those are very solid and sound tips. Those are, uh, they're, they're proven. And one thing I'd like to add to that is uh, something I call activating your social security network, which is, mm. you know, talk to your neighbors. Right. Um, yeah. You know, uh, not the one that just got back from jail for <laughs> burglary. Don't let that person yeah, don't, know you're going out. Of yeah. Jail. Be now, careful about who you tell stuff to. Yeah, That's true. But, but in all seriousness, you know, community is the thing that makes us safe. And yeah. so when we're talking to our neighbors and we're letting them know, hey, listen, I'm going to be out of town. Would you mind keeping an eye on the house? Right. Uh, they know. They know what cars live in the neighborhood. They know, you know, what, you know, if you have a, a, a lawn service or, you know, what, right. what is out of place? Right. What is what is normal? 
Right. Um, and, you know, and, and oftentimes their intuition and their willingness, and, and I can't underscore this enough, if you see something unusual, give us a call. We'd much rather come out and catch somebody doing something they shouldn't be doing right. and come out later on and, and take the paperwork associated right. with it after you've been the victim of a crime. Right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think if you, you know, if you talk to your neighbors as well, that's uh, that's probably a sound, sound tip as well, but everything that you've shared, uh, these are, these are proven tactics. And I, and I will tell you that, you know, if you have an alarm on your house, that's also good. If you can avail yourself of like a, you know, a, a you know, I hate to use a brand name, but it's what comes to mind, like a ring doorbell yeah, or like right. an Arlo camera system or right. something like that on your house. These are really inexpensive tools. You're mm-hmm. talking about a couple of hundred dollars. And uh, people, frankly, don't want to break into houses that have that type of surveillance technology. Right. Yeah. And then lastly, I'd say, you know, consider availing yourself of our, of our Smart Water CSI strategy, uh, that program that we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on our website. Um, it's also on our Facebook page. Um, you know, it, this is a forensically coded, uh, liquid that you can put on your valuables so that if they are stolen, um, we have a proprietary light when we come across stuff in pawn shops or in the backs of cars that we pull right, over. Right. If it glows, we swab it like DNA and we can get it back to you. That's awesome. Um, and there are some things that insurance just can't replace. And so right. that's one of the reasons we use that program. Right. And I mentioned the burglars from home alone. This next one is, is, is. Is, is the one that I can't, I just can't shake as I, throughout the holiday season is properly disposing of your packages. Um, if, if you want to keep something safe, you, you, you probably shouldn't, uh, I don't know, what's the word, market it to people, right? Advertise right. to the, right. to the general public that this thing that this box is sitting on my curb for is now inside my house. And if you would like it, you can just break in and come get it. So you want to make sure you take time to break down your boxes and ensure all your labels and brands are hidden. Make sure that all shipping Packages can fit inside your recycling bin and do not leave any boxes sitting next to your bin. And lastly, if you're able, peel off the shipping labels that contain your address or mark through them with a permanent marker. I am, I am notorious for this. I mean, if I get a box, I break it down. Nothing. I don't care if somebody wants to buy me a big screen TV. That's great. I will be very excited. I will also break that box down so nobody knows that that 55 inch TV is in my house. Um, I would imagine that this again goes back to the whole opportunity, the whole idea of someone lazy driving past, sees a big, you know, box, sees a thing for a high dollar item, and says, "Hey, that they, that that's in there, and they're not there." Um, this kind of goes hand in hand with the vacation safety. Even if you're not necessarily on vacation, you sort of still need to be mindful of this. Not just you know for if you're going out of town, maybe to visit family on the day of or the day after, but also too just generally around that time period. At any time that you have something like that, don't just leave your boxes out there for, you know, advertisement purposes. Um, what, what stands out to you about that? Is that something that, that happens a lot where people, you know, because it was a box on a, on a, on a, on a sidewalk that they understand that like, Hey, that item is in that house and I'm going to go get it. Yeah. It's kind of the double-edged sword of marketing, right? I mean, <laughs> these boxes, you have paid professionals that, that sit down and, and, and go through a process of trying to uh, you know, make the item look as appealing as possible right, right. on the box. Right. And then of course people get the, the item and then they put that box out in the front lawn. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just <laughs> screams, Hey, there's a, there's a 55 inch colored television You're right. you know, in this house and it's probably not put up on the wall yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's definitely something to look at. You know, I'll tell you that, you know, the, the Chesterfield County uh, landfill uh, it's like seven bucks. I yeah, think if you, right. if you fill up a pickup truck and, or, or a van of, of box, as you said, break it down. That's a $7 investment in your safety. Don't put this stuff out on the curb. Yeah. Uh, you know, break it down with an X-Acto knife. Be careful doing so. Throw it in the back of your car, your truck, or whatever, SUV. Take it out to the Chesterfield County landfill. It's $7. Uh, dispose of it that way. Don't put it out on the curb. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I want to talk a little about, since you're here, the Citizens Academy for the Police Department as well. Obviously, um, you know, in this day and age, people, you know, I, I think for for both fire EMS and for 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 public, you know, law enforcement in general, there's this there's this urge to know more, to get more information, to understand better, to to sort of immerse yourself, you know, whether it's podcasts or what have you. The Citizens Academy in, in Chesterfield in, it's for residents, business owners, and members of the civic groups, um, 18 and older. Um, participants learn about specialized police units. They observe the handling of 911 calls, operate the police radar. They ride with a police officer, watch uh, police canines, search for drugs, and there's a whole lot more involved. And upon completion, participants receive a certificate from the chief of police. 
who I believe I know now. Right. Uh, and during a graduation ceremony. Um, what sort of time frame uh, do you guys do this on? And, and what, how, how has that program grown over the years? Uh, well, we do a number of them. And we have, uh, we have over 800 graduates oh, wow. of our Citizen Academy. And we actually have an alumni association. Oh, so, great. you know, when you go through the Citizen Academy, you become uh, part of the Chesterfield County Police family. Uh, and we remain in touch. Uh, and I think that's so important. Yeah. Um, and to a person, every every person I've spoken to in the last four years that have gone through our program has said that they have a deeper appreciation and understanding of the work that our men and women do. Uh, and we really have t- turned this into an immersive experience. We run our uh, class through the same type of scenarios that we run our officers through, through mm. their training. We furnish them with body cameras during the scenarios and have them review their own body cameras. Oh, that's great. And uh, it's a very immersive experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and it's one that I think really does connect our community with our, with our officers. Citizenship is not a passive process. Right. It's an active process. Right. And with those rights that we have in our community, we have the responsibility as well. If we, if we want to learn more, if we want to be involved, then this is a wonderful starting place to do it, to start to develop those relationships, to understand the processes that we have. It's very easy to sit back and listen to other people describe their experiences and their story. Uh, My challenge to people is if you have an interest and you really do care, come out and take a look at this program and formulate an opinion on your own. Yeah, that's great. Well, Colonel Katz, thank you very much for joining us today and talking to us about not just holiday safety, but also obviously the Citizens Academy. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. I appreciate yours. Thank you. Lastly, I want to talk to you about a couple of programs that the uh, Chesterfield County Sheriff's Department also offers. First, there is a safe exchange zone. So the idea here with the safe exchange zone is that you have a place, maybe it's a, uh, an online sale, maybe it's a, some sort of face-to-face exchange, and you want to be able to do that in a place that is safe, in a place that, that you feel comfortable, that they feel comfortable, and everybody understands. Um, this also can work for child custody exchanges too, where basically it's any, any situation where someone feels the need to have some extra protection or somebody feels the need for any sort of recorded video surveillance. So that's a program that the County Sheriff's Department offers, and it's certainly something if you uh, if you feel like that that is something you want to take advantage of this holiday season, feel free to reach out to, to them. The other program I want to talk about is called Seniors in Touch. So Seniors in Touch is available for senior citizens throughout Chesterfield County, where se- sheriff's deputies will make daily contact with citizens uh, to check on their well-being. So there are a lot of folks during this holiday season who aren't able to see loved ones, and maybe they want sheriff's deputies to do that for them. So the sheriff's deputies will conduct weekly visits to senior citizens and help them with their household tasks security checks, and more. So you can also reach out to the Chesterfield County Sheriff's Department for that program as well. Um, lastly, I want to say thank you to uh, Chief Center and Colonel Katz for them coming on the show and talking to us about ways to keep uh, safe this holiday season. If you're also interested in maybe giving back this holiday season, you can check out episode five of the podcast where we talk to Phyllis Potes, who is the 2021 uh, Chesterfield Christmas mother. Um, talked about all the different ways that you can get involved and give back to your community. So check that out as well. All right, you can follow us on social media. On Twitter, it's Chesterfield VA, and on Instagram, it's Chesterfield Virginia, all one word. And on Facebook, you can check out our Facebook page. Just search Chesterfield Behind the Mic. Make sure to like that page so you can keep up with us. Now, let me give you all the ways you can check us out. You can watch us on our YouTube channel as well as on our uh, website at chesterfield.gov slash podcast. That audio-only version of the show is available there as well as on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, and a whole host of other services. You can also watch the show on WCCT Thursday through Sunday at 7 on weekends at noon. That's Comcast Channel 98 and Verizon Channel 28. Lastly, you can check out Chesterfield.gov slash connect with us for a way to connect with us and get more information about what we've got going on here. My thanks to Martin Stiff, Susan Pollard, and everybody here at Communications and Media for making this possible. We really appreciate all that they do. So for all of us here in Chesterfield County, thank you very much for making us a part of your day. We'll see you again soon. Take good care.